dry. You, you, I don't know what to call you. The idea of you shouting at me like that, like the evil one, come out of the darkness. You ought to have remembered your tender nerves. Shall I come in? No, not for your impudence. But you're late, aren't you? It's only just gone six. But I'll bet Charles Holroyd was home before four. Aye. Gone again before five. Where's he gone? I don't know. He's got a game on somewhere. Toffed himself up to the nines and skedaddled off. As brisk as a turkey cock. Though turkey cocks aren't brisk as a rule. Children playing? Yes. And they ought to be in. Here, take hold and let me fold it. I shall swarf it up. Oh, you're as tiresome as everybody else. Well, I can soon wash my hands. That roll of towels ever so dirty. I'll get you another. Why, bless my life, I'm a lot dirtier than the towel. I don't want another. Here you are. Why did you trouble now? Pride, you know. Pride, nothing else. It's nothing but decency. Pride, pride, pride. Wild dog! Why, where have you been? What have you been doing now? One minute to play. Where's Minnie? I'm here, ma'am. What do you think? Well, what should I think? Yes, ma'am. You know my father. I should hope so. We saw him dancing, ma'am, with a paper bonnet. What? Some women down knew him what's come from Nottingham. And he's dancing with the pink one. Shut up, Arminie. They've got pink bonnets on, ma'am. All colours, ma'am. Shut up, Arminie. My dad's dancing with her. With the pink bonnet one, ma'am. Up in the club room. Over the bar. And she's a lot littler than him, ma'am. Shut up, Arminie. There's lots of folks outside watching. Looking at my dad. He can dance, can't you, ma'am? And who else is there? Some more men. Shh. Shut up. Another woman with my paper bonnets on. Shut up, Aunt Minnie. They say they're coming to break from Nottingham. What's that, the lamp, lass? I never know if Mr. Blackmore is here. You got another? No. We can manage with a candle for tonight. I'll see if I can't get you one from the pit. Shan't in No, no, don't trouble it. Mr. Blackmore, come for tea, mate. No. He's had no tea. I bet he's hungry. Can I have some bread? Yes. You can get your boots off. Go to bed. It's not seven o'clock yet. Doesn't matter. What do you wear paper bonnets for, ma'am? Because they're brazen hussies. What's the dog's nose, ma'am? Don't ask me, child. How should I know? What do you eat it, ma'am? Eat what? Only the paper bonnet. Eat the dog's nose. No, of course not. How should I know what a dog's nose is? I bet he'll never go to work tomorrow, Mother. Will he? God, that's nice. I'm sick of it. Disgracing me. There'll be the whole place cackling this now. They've no sooner finished about him getting taken up for fighting than they'll begin on this. But I'm going to put a stop to it, some road or other. It's not going on. Not if I know it is. Hey, Alan. Got one all right. They give it to Mr. Blackmore. No, I took it. Would you wear blue trousers for Mr. Blackmore? Let's get rid of the trousers from getting greasy. And when you wear pit bridges like Dad's, because he's electrician. Could you make me a little engine what would make electric light? I will someday. Why don't you come and live here? Huh? <laughs> now you've got your own dad to live here. You could come as well. Dad shouts when we've gone to bed, and he thumps on the table. He wouldn't if you were here. He did. Be quiet now, be quiet. Mr. Blackmore. Your hands are cold. Are they? I didn't know. You must want your tea. No, I'm in no hurry. Salvage to salvage. You'll be quite a domestic man if you go on. <laughs> Aye. They'll wipe your sheets. Look at the smuts on them. Look! This vile hole. I'd never have come to live here in all the thick of the pit grime and lonely if it hadn't been for him. So he shouldn't call in a public house on his road home from work. And now, 
he slinks past on the other side of the railway, goes down to the new inn instead of coming in for his dinner. Might as well have stopped in Bestwood. Though I rather like this little place. Standing by itself. Jack, can you go and get the stockings in for me? They're on the line. The props by the apple tree. Mind it. Minnie, you take the pig basket. Will there be any rats, Mum? Rats? No. They'll be frightened when they hear you if there are. Poor little beggars. <laughs> Do you know this place is fairly alive with rats? They run up that dirty vine in front of the house. I'm always at them to cut it down. And you can hear them overhead at night, like a regiment of soldiers tramping. Oh, really, you know, I hate them. Well, a rat is a nasty thing. But us will get used to them. I'd give anything to be out of this place. It is rotten when you're tied to a life you don't like. But I should miss it if you weren't here. When I'm coming down the line to the pit in the morning, I watch the fire light in here. Sometimes I put my hand on the wall where the chimney runs up to feel it warm. There isn't much in Bestwood, is there? There's less than nothing, if you can't be like the rest of them. Common as they're made. It's a fact. Particularly for a woman. But this place is cosy. God love me, I'm sick of lodgings. You'll have to get married. I'm sure there are plenty of nice girls about. Really? Eh? Never seen them. Come, you can't say that. I've not seen a single girl, an unmarried girl, that I should want for more than a fortnight. Not one. Perhaps you're very particular. Look here. Yes, I know you've got nice hands, but you needn't be vain of them. No. Not the scene. Don't you think they sort of go well with one another? They do, rather. Why, what is it? Shoot the lot of them like a wink. But you've had no tea. What an awful shame to keep you here. No, I don't care. It never bothers me. And you're different from most men. All men aren't alike, you know. But do go and get some tea. Can't you stop, Mr. Blackmore? Why, Minnie? Says we're not frightened. Frightened? What? Because there's noises of rats, and perhaps Dad will come over and shout. It would shout more if I was here. He doesn't know Uncle John's here. So you stop and perhaps he won't. Don't you like him to shout when you're in bed? to see you. 
Can I sit here? Rest but weary. I've laughed till I feel fair bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, haven't you got a drop of nothing to offer us, Mester? Come, you are slow. I should have thought a gentleman like you would have been out with the glasses before we got breaths to ask you. <laughs> I don't believe so. Tin house been a bottle of stout. It feels as if kettle's gonna boil over. <laughs> it's it. What do you say, Laura? Are you having a drop? Well, I, I don't mind. I will if you do. I think we'll have a drop, Charlie, and risk it. It'll happen all the rest down. <laughs> hey, who come here? Hey, it's a rat! Yeah. Oh, oh, save us! The lamp, my oh, love! Where is it? I believe he's gone under the sofa and oh. lies a thumper, if you like, as big as a rabbit. Let me up! Let me up! Don't touch him! Where is he? Hang off! Do you want a body down? No, I'm going to tell you. He'll get a chance. He will. He will, and they're poisoned. Any better? No. Shall you have a drink of water? No. She'll have a drop of something. Uh. You don't happen to have a drop of brandy for her, do you, missus? Go to bed. What's the matter, mother? Never you mind, go to bed. Be quick, missus! Coming round now, love. You will not need this anymore. No, thanks. I'm very much obliged. Come, this is no place for you. Come back to bed. No, Mum, I don't want to. Come along. I'm frightened, Mum. Frightened? What of? Oh, there was a row. Did they frighten you, my pet? Mother, it's pink bonnet and blue bonnet what was dancing. I don't want to get to bed, Mum. I'm frightened. We're going now, Ducky. You're not frightened of us, are you? Now then, get off after you, Mother. I say, what's the dog's nose? Oh. Well, he weighs upstairs. It's only a small whiskey with a spoonful of beer in it, me duck. Oh. Come here, me duck, come on. You tell your mother we didn't mean no harm, won't you? The maid off. They're only earrings, don't you like them? Hmm. This is pretty, isn't it? Do you like it? Jack! Jack! Now then, get off! Give me a kiss goodnight, Ducky, and give this to your sister, shall you? But aren't you going to give me a kiss and all? Nice children. Aye. Oh dear, you're very short all of a sudden. Don't answer if it hurts you. My, isn't it different? No, I'm no different. Yes, you are. You shouldn't have brought us if you were going to turn funny over it. I'm not funny. No, you're not. <laughs> you're about as solemn as a roast potato. <laughs> I yet had it to be mashed. That happened better. Oh, indeed. You think I've got to pull a mug to look decent? You'd have to pull a big one at that rate. <laughs> I've got plenty of fizzy in these, seemingly. <laughs> Don't. You've been drinking. <laughs> Should be going, eh? 
Where are you taking us? Oh, please yourself for that. Come on, man. Oh, indeed. Yeah, come on, let's be moving. What's your hurry? Yeah, come on, Miss Eve. I don't think. It's used to sit near. I'm very comfy, I thank thee. That's a baffling little hussy. Are you having anything, my dear? No, come on, let's sit. Hands up! I don't know what you think of us, I'm sure. I think nothing at all. So you fix your thoughts elsewhere, do you? No, but I have been awful tonight. I don't want to know anything about you. I shall be glad when you'll go. Turning out time, Laura. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sure. Never mind. But as true as I'm here, missus, I would never have come if I'd thought. But I'd had a drop. It all started with your husband saying he wasn't a married man. <laughs> I've never known her to go off like it. It's after time she's had. My husband was a brute to me. I was in bed three months after he died. He was a brute, he was. And this is the first time I've been out. It's the most the first laugh I've had for a year. It's true what she says. We thought she'd go out of her mind. She never spoke a word for a fortnight. Though he's only been dead for two months, he was a brute to me. I don't know why I should hear all this. I know. I must have seemed awful. And them children. Aren't they nice little things, Laura? They are that. And are you about done there? My word, is this the way you treat a lady when she comes to see you? I'll see you down the line. You'll not come at strike with us. We've got no hats, neither of us. We've got our own hair on our heads at any rate. And I've been educated at a boarding school as good as anybody. I can behave myself either in the drawing room or in a kitchen as is fitting and proper. But if you buried an husband like mine, you wouldn't feel you're very much left to be proud of. And you might go off occasionally. I don't want to hear you. Sorry I spoke. Here, my mind points down the line. I thank thee, Charlie. Mind thy own points. Where's the slippers? Don't stay here. Funny things. <laughs> yeah, they'll be at him. Trouble that rock and basement, cut me foot open. And have you never been in love? I don't think so. I don't know. But you must know. I must go and 
shut that door that keeps clicking. Hello? What's it? Who are you? Has he gone to bed? He's lying on the bed. And will you settle now? I don't know. He's like that sometimes. He will have delirium tremens if he goes on. You can't stay with him, you know. And the children? We'll take them. Oh. Look at me and kiss me. <laughs> My God, but I hate him. I wish either he was dead or me. You can't go on like it anymore. I feel as if I should come in too. I can't keep away from you. I can't. If you knew what a hell it's been for me to have you here and to see him. I can't go without you, I can't. It's been hell every moment for six months now. You say I don't love you. Perhaps I don't, for all I know about it. Oh my God, don't kick me like a tail. Why should I have you and I've never had anything? Have you never loved anybody? No. I've tried. Kiss me of your own wish, wouldn't you? Go right away. Do you care for me? I don't know. Well, when do you think you will know? I don't know. Yes, you do know, really. If he were dead, should you marry me? Don't say. Why not? If wishing a mind would kill him, he'd soon be out of the way. And then the children. Good money. But he's their father. What does that mean? Yes, I know. But... Is it him that keeps you? No. Well then. Come with me.
will you tell me tomorrow? Oh, you ought not. It's all right. Is it? Yes, it is. It's all right. Should have waited for me. Oh, wait. I not have married him. I might never have known you. I married him to get out of my place. And you never cared about him? Yes, I did. I did care for him. I wanted to be a wife to him. But there's nothing at the bottom of him, if you know what I mean. You can't get anywhere with him. There's just his body and nothing else. Nothing that keeps him, no anchor, no roots. Nothing satisfying. It's a horrible feeling there is about it that nothing is safe or permanent. Nothing is anything. And do you think you can trust me? I think you're different from him. Perhaps I'm not. You are. At any rate, we'll see. You come with me on Saturday to London. But isn't it wrong? Why? You don't care for him and the children are miserable between the two of you, which they are? Yes. Well, then I see no wrong. As for him, he'd go one way and only one way. Damn him, he doesn't matter. No, I know. Well, then, I've done with it. Can't you cut clean? Can't you now? And then the children. They'll be all right with you and me, won't they? Yes. Well, then. Now, come on, I've done with it. I love you, I do. Go then, at any rate. You come with me? I'll come on Saturday. Not now. I can see. You can see the way to your own mouth. See. Good gracious. You're as bad as your father if it's a bit dusk. Time for bed. Well, my father hasn't come home yet. Never mind. He'll be as drunk as a lord when he does come. And he may sleep on the floor till he wakes himself. Isn't he a nuisance? I hate him. I wish he'd dropped our picture. Jack, I never heard such a thing in my life. You mustn't say such things. It's wicked. Well, I do. Well, I won't hear it. He's your father, remember? Well, he's always coming home and shouting and banging on the table. Well, you mustn't take any notice of him. Happily he said something nice to mother. Nothing to get to bed. And not shall. I hit him in the mouth. Perhaps we'll go to another country. Away from him, should we? In a ship, in a ship, ma'am. Yes, in a big ship, where it's blue sky and water and palm trees. And dates. Oh, when should we go? Someday. But who'd work for us? I can go to work for us. 
I've got a lot of money now that my uncle left me. Well, would my father stop here? Oh, he'd be all right. Who would he live with? I don't know. One of his paper bonnets, if he likes. <laughs> Youngster's gone to bed. My father hasn't come home yet. Did he go to work then after last night? I suppose so. His bit things were gone when I got up. I never thought he'd go. And he took his snap as usual? Yes, just as usual. I suppose he's gone to the new inn. He'd say to himself he'd pay me out. That's what he always does say. I'll pay thee out for that bit. I'll make thee regret it. So you think he's gone to the new inn? I'm sure of it. And he'll have a bout now, you'll see. Go fetch him, Mr. Batmore. My mother says we should go on a ship and leave him. Shall I go and see if he's at the new inn? No, perhaps you'd better not. Well, we shan't see me, I can easily manage that. Fetch him, Mr. Blackmore. All right, Jack. Shall I? We're always pulling on you. But yes, do. Gilby. Well, then flowers for them. You come and go to bed now. <laughs> Has to be out of the way when he does come. Mum, you can have that bracelet to get to bed with. I'm going to say your prayers. Can I? Have you finished your prayers? Yes. If you want it, beastly thing. Your father must have put it up there. I don't know where I left it. I suppose I think it was proud of it and wanted it for an ornament. Hello, Mother. Is it you? Yes, it's me. Haven't you finished ironing? Not yet. You'll have your irons red hot. Yes. Guess I'll have to stand them to cool. And you don't know what's become of Charles? Well, he's not come home from work yet. I suppose he was at the new inn. Why? That electrician come knocking, asking if I knew where he was. I said, hey, I've not set eyes on him for over a week. Nor his wife, neither. Though they both pass the garden gate every time they go out, I know now it's on him. I asked him what the matter was. He said Mrs. Olroyd was anxious because he'd not come home. So I thought I'd better come and see. Is there anything up? No more than I've told you. That's a rum one. If he's neither at the New Inn nor the Prince of Wales. I suppose you've done something to set him off. It's nothing I've done. He brought a couple of bright daisies here last night. Two of those trollops from Nottingham, and I said I'd not have it. Aye, uh, you've never been able to agree. We agreed well enough, except when he drank like a fish and came home rolling. And what do you expect from a man that's been shut up in pit all day? <laughs> He's got to have a bit of relaxation. You can have it different from that, then. At any rate, I'm sick of it. Aye, uh, you've a stiff neck. But it'll be bad by you my age. Will it? I'd rather it were broke. Well, there's no telling what a jealous man might do. Nay, I think it's my place to be jealous. And he brings a brazen hussy here and sits carrying on with her. No, I had no business to do that. But you know, Lizzie, he has got something on his side. What, pray? Well, I don't want to make any mischief. But you are my son's wife. And it's nothing but my duty to tell you. They've been saying for a long time now. 
as that electrician comes here a bit too often. Well, he doesn't come for my asking. No, I don't suppose he wants for asking. But Charlie's not the man to put up with that sort of work. Charlie put up with it? If he's anything to say, why doesn't he say it? Without going to other folks. Charlie's never been near me with the word. Nor has he said a word elsewhere, to my knowledge. But for all that, this will end with trouble. And this whole of a gossiping creature thinks she's got the right to cackle about you. Sickening. And a parcel of lies. Well, Lizzie, I've never said anything against you. Charlie's been a handful of trouble. He's made my heart ache once or twice before you had him. And he's made it ache many, many times since. But it's not all on his side, you know. No, I don't know. You always thought you were above him, Lizzie. And he's not the man to stand it. No, he's run away from it. And what man wouldn't leave a woman who's allowed him to live on sufferance in the house with her when he brings home the money? On sufferance? I've always been very clever at hitting things off, Lizzie. I was always sorry that my youngest son married a clever woman. He only wanted a bit of coaxing, managing. You clever women won't do it. He wanted a slave, not a wife. It's a pity your stomach wasn't too high for him before you had him. But no. You could have eaten him ravishing at one time. It's a pity you didn't tell me what he was before I had him. But no, he was all angel. He left me to find out what he really was. They tell me, Mrs, is your master's not home yet? No. Who is it? Ask him to step inside. Don't stand there letting the fog in. Good evening. Oh, is it you, Mr Ridley? Uh, he butties along with Charlie. Oh. And then you see no on him? No. Was he all right at work? Well, he went out to mention. A bit short, Lark. I haven't much to say. I can't make out where he's done with you, sin. Well, didn't he come up in the same bantle with you? No, he didn't. As I was coming out at stall, I shouted, Oh, come in, Charlie. We're all off. And he says, I'm coming in a minute. They were just finishing a stint, like, and wanted to get it set. And he'd been a bit roughish in his temper, like, so I thought he didn't want to walk to the bottom with it. And what's he gone and done to himself? Nay, hey, Mrs. You mustn't ask me that. He's not to note as I know one. Only I was thinking um, something had happened to him, like, seeing as nobody had any knowings on him coming up. What is the matter, Mr. Wrigley? Tell us it out. I, I cannot do that, Mrs. But it seems as if he never come up pit, as, as far as we can make out. That a bit of stuff's fell and pinned him. You mean you left him lying down there in pit, poor thing? Uh, I cannot say for certain where he is. Oh, it's very likely not very bad, Mother. Don't let us run to meet trouble. We have to hope for the best, Mrs. All on us. They'll be bringing him home. I know they will. Smashed up and broke. One of my sons, they burned down pit till his flesh dropped off him. And one was shot till his shoulder was all a mosh and they brought him home to me. And now there's this. Don't, Mother. You don't know that he's hurt. I cannot tell you. Then what is it? I cannot tell you. But, uh, young electrician, uh, Mr Blackmore, he rung down to at night deputy and, well, it seems as though there's been a fall or something. Hey, Lizzie. You parted from him in anger. You little know how you'd meet again. Well, I'd, I'd best be going. See what's betide. I've brought up five lads in pit. Through accidents and troubles and now there's this. The Lord's treated me very hard. Very hard. It's a blessing, Lizzie, you got a bit of money. Else what would have become of the children? Well, we shall manage. And perhaps it's not very much. There's no knowing, but they're carrying him to die in hospital. Oh, don't say so, Mother. It won't be so bad. You'll see. How much money have you got, Lizzie? Come in. I don't know. Not much over a hundred pounds. And what's that? What's that? Gosh. That's twice they sent the chair down. Listen. What is it? What is it? It's the doctor's motor. Dare you stop here, Mother, while I run to the top and see? Best not go, Lizzie, best not. Women are best away. It is unbearable to wait. Well, come in and shut door. 
the cold gets in your bones. Oh, I do wish somebody would come. He's never been hurt since we were married. No, never had a bad accident since he worked in pit. He's been luckier than most, but everybody gets it sooner or later. It is a horrid night. Come your ways in. They're bringing him. What is it? She can't tell anything's the matter with him. It's not marked him at all. Oh, what a place. And is it much? Well. What is it? It's the worst. Who is it? What's he saying? I came to tell you they're bringing him home. And it wasn't so very bad, you said? No, I said it's as bad as it could be. Oh, Mother. What should we do? What should we do? You don't mean to say that he's dead? Yes. How was it? Some stuff fell. Oh, God. oh God, have mercy on us. Oh, Lizzie. To think he should be cut off in his wickedness. Oh. He's gone very wrong of late years. Poor dear lamb, very wrong. <laughs> oh, Lizzie. Think what will happen to him now. Oh. If only you try to be different with don't, him. Don't, don't, mother, don't. I can't bear it. <laughs> Where will you have him laid? The men will be here in a moment. They can uh, carry him up to bed. You can't take him upstairs. You'll have to wash him and lay him out. We'd better have him in the parlour, Lizzie. We can handle him in there. Yes. Never mind that. I'll clear that up. You're going to get the parlour ready. Bringing him now, Mrs. There must have been a fall directly after we left him. No, no. It fell back of him and shut him in, as you might shut a loaf in the oven. It never touched him. Well, then. You see, it come on him and get him nowhere, and, and what with gas, it smothered him. And it wouldn't have been so very long about it, neither. Oh, hey, dear. Hey, dear, dear. I wasn't it to know what had happened. He'd have had a few minutes to repent. The Lord cut him off in his sins, but he'd have given him time to repent. If you just move out of the way, Mrs. Holroyd, we can lay him on this. What's the use of messing about? It suffocated him. Yes, up and after done. Be dead in a few minutes. Oh, I think. I mustn't think. They're coming. Oh, mind now, mind. Mind. Oh, my missus. What a job indeed it is. When would they pour him? Lay him in the parlour. Oh, my poor boy. Steady now. Do it steady. My guy. Well, he hangs heavy. I draw back my life on that. Hey, Mr. Chambers. What affliction is this on my old age? You kept your sons out at pit. But all mine are in. When I think of the trouble I've had, when I think of the trouble that's come to me out of Brensley Pit... It has that. It has that, Missus. You seem to have had more in your share. I'll admit it, you have. It is too much. You never known such a thing in your life. Here's a man, he's all in a stint, he's just finishing. Lots of stuff falls behind him, clean as a whistle. Shuts him up, safe as a worm in a nut, and never touches him. He never knowed such a thing in your life. Ugh. It never hurt him. It never touched him. Yes, but, but 
How long would he be? How long would it take to to kill him? Oh, nay, I cannot tell you. He didn't seem to have strived much to get out. Did he, Joe? Not as far as I'd seen. Yeah, look at his hands, you'll see then. He none had room to swing the pick. Oh, don't. Oh, why? Nails is broken a bit. Don't. He'd be sure to make a bit of a fight, but the gas would soon get old on him. Ah, it's, it's an awful thing to think of, it is indeed. I can't bear it. You disturb the children. We don't want them down here. He'd no business to have been left down there. And what man does think we're going to sit him down on his hands and wait for a chap as wouldn't have say thank you for his company? He'd been ready to fall out with a flicker at candle. So who does think we're going to stop when we know he only kept on so as to get shut on oh, us? Uh, quite right, Bill, quite right. For not knowing else about... Say not again, thee. Neither one road nor t'other. I expect the inquest will be at the new inn tomorrow, Mrs. I'll let you know. Will there have to be an inquest? Oh, aye. There'll have to be an inquest. Well, shall you want somebody in? To stop with you tonight? No. Right, well, we'd best be going. Oh, I'll send me missus down, first thing in the morning. You'll be all right, then? Yes. Well, good night, then. Good night. Night all. Good night. Good night. It's like this, Mrs. I never should have gone if he hadn't wanted us to. Yes, I know. He wanted to come up with his sin. Yes, I know how it was, Mr. Wrigley. Yes. Nobody could foresee. No. Well, if there's out, Mrs. as you want. Yes. I don't think there is anything. Well, good night, then. We've worked in the same stall all four years now. Yes. Well, good night, Mrs. Good night. We got the things ready. What things? To lay the child out. No. What? Haven't you put him by a pair of white stockings? Not a white shirt? He's got a white cricketing shirt, not white stockings. Well, he'll have to have his father's. Let me see the shirt. Lizzie. This'll never do. Cold canvas thing with a turned down collar. He'll have to have his father's. We mun let him set. He'll be that heavy, bless him. It'll only be a few minutes. Young fella can stop till I get back. I'll take her for you, Mrs. Holroyd. No. You wouldn't know where to find the things. I'll have to wash him as soon as I get back. All right. This is a judgment on us. Why? On me, it is. How? It is. Yesterday you talked of murdering him. Well? Now we've done it. How? He would have come up with the others if he hadn't felt... felt me murdering him. We can't help it. It's my fault. Don't be like that. I... I daren't see him. No. I've killed him. That is all. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. But we can't help it. If he hadn't felt, if he hadn't known, he wouldn't have stayed. He would have come up with the rest. Well, 
And even if it were so, we can't, we can't help it now. But we've killed him. Oh, I'm tired. Yes. Shall I stay? I don't be alone with him. No. Now he's dead, I don't love him. He lies like he did yesterday. I suppose being dead. I don't know. I think you better go. Yes. You want me to go? No. But do go. I shall come again tomorrow. My dear, my dear, oh my dear, oh I can't bear it my dear. You shouldn't have done it. Oh. And I can't bear it for you. Why couldn't I do anything? children's father. My dear. I wasn't good to you. Then you shouldn't have done this to me. Did it hurt you? Oh, my dear, it hurt you. Oh, I, I can't bear it. Yeah. 
No. No, things aren't fair. We went wrong, my dear. I never loved you enough. I never did. What a shame for you. His hands. Oh, pretty. Pretty, Lizzie. I don't want thee going off, Lizzie. Oh. What shall I do? Why go there and get his feet washed? We shall never get him laid out. What a man he is. I've had some fine sons, Lizzie. Some big men of sons. He was always whiter than me. And he used to chaff me. I used to thank God for my children, Lizzie. But they're rods of trouble. Unfasten his belt, child. We mun get him done soon. We shall have such a job. <laughs>